Section 11 for example three. So we're doing ANOVA. Remember ANOVA is when we have um, averages, not proportions. So we're doing averages, so numerical data, and we have more than two categories, right? Because for one or two categories, we already had a method. So more than two categories or samples. So this is when we use ANOVA. So step one with hypothesis testing is really identifying which one should I be using. Um, it's a little bit easier in the notes because everything's sorted by section, right? So really step one, decide what test to use. So a farmer is testing the effects of four different fertilizers. So there's my hint, four, so that's more than two. Four different fertilizer, fertilizers on the yields of a certain variety of tomato plants. So basically how many tomatoes does it pr produce? Um, the four fertilizers are randomly applied to 10 different tomato plants and the number of tomatoes produced by each plant are recorded and I put those in the data below. So fertilizer A, one had 33, one had 29, right? These are the number of tomatoes and so on. So we have four different um, fertilizers. So now we wanna use the sample to decide if the data provides enough evidence at 5% to show that the true mean so again, that's a hint that we're in mean land. Um, so, and it's not the same for all the fertilizers. So we're in mean land, but we have four groups, so we're gonna jump to ANOVA. So what is the factor? So factor just means groups. So my groups are the fertilizers. So type of fertilizer or just fertilizer, the fertilizer are the groups. Um, what's the response variable? So what is the actual variable that we're measuring? That would be the number of tomatoes, right? That's my data. So that's what we're calculating average of. All right, so let's do the hypothesis test. Um, so steps um, one and two the setup. So H1, since we have four groups, we have four means. So mu1, mu2, mu3, and mu4. So I might label that here just to remind me. A is one, two, three, and four. So that'll help remind me. And then again, I'm not going to put that not equal sign because it might be mu1 and mu2 are different, but mu3 and mu4 are the same. It might be that all of them are different, right? We just know there is a difference. So we don't know what the difference is. So we just say at least one mean is different. Could be three of them do really well and only one is different. It could be that all of them are different. So at least one mean is different. And then step two is that nice easy step. Our alpha was 05 for 5% 5 significance. All right, and now what's nice is step three and four is our calculator or stat crunch will do it for us. So we'll do it on the calculator. Um, so if you have your calculator out, what you're gonna do is it's gonna be a little annoying to type everything, um, but we're gonna type four different lists on the calculator. So we have L1, L2, L3, and L4. Um, I've already done this, so pause the video and then come back once you've typed all four lists. Um, Double check for typos, it's a little easy to make a mistake. But stat, edit, um, I have all four, right? Make sure they're all the same length, things to check for, it'll give you error messages. Just double check, so I have it all there, so come back if you're ready. All right, so we're gonna find a Nova on the calculator. So it's in a slightly different menu. So you're gonna go to second distribution, oops, actually second stat, stat, sorry. Just hit stat. I've been clicking so many menus today, I just forgot which one. That's why we're gonna write it down. Um, we've done edit a lot, we've done calc a lot, but this time you're actually gonna go over to test. And then if you're using a different calculator, let me know, or if you can't find it, let me know. Um, there's always stat crunch, it's pretty quick on stat crunch. And then you're going to go down to ANOVA. So it's pretty far down. You just have to scroll all the way down depending on what calculator you're on. So you go to stat, tests, and then ANOVA is at the very bottom. So sometimes I actually hit the up arrow and it'll take you to the bottom one. 
but we go down to ANOVA, and then you have to tell it how many lists to look at. So it's not gonna know which, how many lists you want it to use, so you have to tell it. So in this case, we have four lists. So L1, comma L2, comma L3, comma L4. And then if you had five, six, seven, right? What's nice about ANOVA is you can have so many different groups, but we have four. So you hit enter. And so our new T score or Z score is now F and you'll see it on the calculator. It's 8.78 and I'll round up to three. That's my new test statistic. We're using F, it's a new curve. And then what's cool about this is we actually don't even have to bother with the p-value. ANOVA found the p-value also. So we don't even have to do like that CDF. Um, it's doing both steps at once. So where it says p, 1.67, e to the negative four. So again, it's one of those tricky numbers. So we move the decimal four to the left, 0 0.000167. So it's a very small p-value. Uh, is it less than our alpha? Yeah. So it's way less than alpha. Very little risk. So we're going to go ahead and reject. It's very unlikely that we just randomly had a difference. It's more likely that there is a difference. So there is enough evidence at 5% to show the true mean amount of tomatoes produced will not be the same for all the tomatoes, all four fertilizers, sorry. So I'm not saying different because maybe three of them are all the same and only the fourth one's different, or maybe all four are different. That's what we'll investigate in a second. Um, so that's our hypothesis test. Um, we like to do a few extra things with ANOVA and then we'll be done. So let's check out the requirements and then we'll make a few conclusions. Um, maybe, right, we're probably curious which fertilizer is better, so that's something we'll look into. So let's go through the requirements. So I kind of copied the requirements over and we can go through what they all mean now since we didn't really go into that last video. So our categorical variable is our factor. So in this example we had that, that was fertilizer. So if you don't have categories, then you probably only have one or two samples, um, and which means you're not using ANOVA. Uh, and then our response variable was our numerical variable, and that was the number of tomatoes. So if we were just looking at tomatoes and we didn't have categories, then maybe we're doing our old average test. But because we had categories of fertilizer, we're using ANOVA. Um, and so independent, I don't think we really understood independent last time. Um, random is fine, right? It says it's random or not. Um, independent means the plants are independent. So I don't know if that was stated or not, but we need the tomato plants to be independent. So you can't put for the same fertilizer on the same, on the same plant, right? You need to put different fertilizers on different plants. And then maybe you don't want them contaminated with soil, so they should be pretty far from each other. That's what we mean by independent. Um, same standard deviation is a little tricky. Um, and they're not gonna be exactly the same, right? We've already learned all semester, things are not exactly the same. So the rule for at least close enough just means the largest standard deviation divided by the smallest needs to be less than two. And that's considered close enough to be the same. Right, we've learned in statistics that the same is not exact. Um, and so I had stat crunch. You could also have your calculator do this, but I found the standard deviation of each category. Um, so which one's the largest? It looks like fertilizer D is my largest. So 4.14 is my largest. And then which one's the smallest? It looks like fertilizer B at 3.43. And then if you divide, I have no idea what this is, but it's less than two, right? Because three times two would be six, but if you wanted to check. But this is less than two. So these are all close enough. That's what that tells me. Yeah, way less than two. So these are considered close enough to be the same, right? And again, remember the same just means close. And then each sample should be large, which we don't have. We only had 10 here. So we would need a normal population. So for now, we'll just hope 
right? Because we only had 10. We'll just hope for a normal population. Um, but if we use StatCrunch, we could look um, at those histograms or probability plots. So that last requirement is similar to what we've been doing, right? 10 was because each group had 10. Total is 40, um, but we're looking at the size of each group. Right, when we say each sample, that's each group. All right, so those are the requirements. So let's now make some meaningful conclusions because if we do statistics and we can't make conclusions, then what's the point? So one of the drawbacks to ANOVA is that while it can convince us that there is a difference, it does not tell us which one is different or how many. So are they all different? Is one difference? It also doesn't explain why, right? Statistics doesn't tell us why. So I made the box plots you could, so I could help us compare. So we have fertilizer D, um, C, B, and A. I put them all in the same graph because it makes it really easy to compare. And then the green is the average. So I added the average to the box plot. So I'm just labeling the averages. Then we can kind of get an idea of which average is different. So I think the box plot plus the average helps us really visualize which one's different. So some of them are different, right? And some of them aren't that different. So I would say there is barely any difference between the means for what? Fertilizer, probably D and C. What do you think? The means are pretty close. The box plots are pretty close. So those probably don't have a difference, right? It's probably just random. So C and D have barely any difference. Um, the sample mean for fertilizer A is also kind of close. It's a tiny bit smaller, but I don't know if that's convincing enough yet. So for A, it's also not that far away. But I would argue that fertilizer B seems substantially smaller than the other three. So ANOVA convinced us that this difference was big enough, and now visually we're seeing that that difference is B. So the graph is not enough because we need ANOVA to tell us that it's a big enough difference, because visually we can't always say it's a big enough difference. So ANOVA tells us it's a big enough difference, and now visually I'm convinced that fertilizer B is the one that's different. It could be sometimes that it's three, two of them are different, um, just depends on the box plot. So ANOVA told us there was a difference, and now I'm convinced that B is the different one. Um, a might be different, but I would argue that it's not different enough to be convinced. So based on these results, what advice would you give a farmer looking into these four fertilizers? Um, so if a farmer wants a fertilizer, a farmer wants more tomatoes, right? So I would advise the farmer to definitely not choose B, right? It's clear that B is not good. Um, I would say maybe avoid A, right? I'm not convinced about A yet, so maybe avoid A. That's why it's just a maybe. It's not a big enough difference in my opinion. But because C and D are clearly the best, I would say the best choices are C or D. And that's ANOVA. Let me know if you have questions.